So this fiction, Eology of Two Minds, can be read as a continuation of my previous, previous piece for Shum, uh, Xenoslavia issue, in which humanity successfully created artificial intelligence. But in this story, the creation turned out to be disastrous for most humans, who in a sense felt like their existence is complete finished, like they won the game of evolution by creating somethly, something vastly greater than them. In other words, they have success, successfully created new timeline, but to which they didn't have access to, and in return got stuck in their current one. They are extinct without dying, so they created new kind of society in which they got rid of all evidence of creating AI and values that led them in the creation of one. Values such, a, such as risk-taking, cunningness, usage of scientific method, innovation, creation, and even philosophy was highly questioned. Um, they also seem to be slowly abolishing writing itself because rapid changes caused by capitalism and AI were now considered a threat and remaining humanity desired for a peaceful and steady development, not necessarily progress, one more in tune with natural progress around them. They wanted to synchronize with the time of organic beings once again. Of course, uh, here, comes the, here comes the catch, because humanity with creation of AI uh, and sending signals into space becomes main target of other civilizations who are now aware of humanity. The kind of humanity with creation of AI uh, somewhat uh, somehow breaks this dark forest uh, theory of uh, space. So aliens are coming to Earth, but here comes the catch. Humans are blissfully unaware of them. They are not able to communicate with them. And fungi, the other intellig intelligence of Earth, are the ones who do. So why did I choose fungi as the, as the other intelligence that is present on, on Earth? Um, I was reading some, some works of Andrew Gallimore, uh, a computational neuro neurobiologist based in Tokyo. And especially alien information theory and reality switch technology. And I was inspired to think about psychedelic experience as a form of language with hum which humans are not quite able to understand correctly or interpret correctly. Since, since uh, psilocybin is found in fungi, and fungi exist on planet Earth for millions of years, I set them up as this Tao-like and activist hive mind intelligence species, especially now, uh, nowadays that we have evidence of fungi that are trading with botanic life for resources, or even wicked holding resources uh, and forcing, for example, a tree into a better deal. And we also have plausible theories that parasitic fungi are using psychedelic molecules to modulate ants' behavior and neural activity. Uh, a recent study also showed that infection with toxoplasma parasite, not exactly a fungi, but some creative freedom, increases the risk taking in social carnivores, especially wolves and hyenas. Um, and for example, this results in infected wolves being almost twice as likely to become pack leaders compared to others. So we have on the, uh, on the one hand, we have humanity, which are like this uh, rational humanity that we know today, you know, Kantian. And on the other hand, we have fungi who are acting like, you know, this, this kind of... Uh, natural natural in, in natural intelligence so um, their slogan or their main words are that nature must compute itself and this is what they strive for they have like this one goal come to the come to the planet creates symbiotes with intelligent species and control the rest so after all, most organisms are constructed from proteins and therefore they all have capability of constructing psychedelic molecules, meaning they have a cap capability of communicating with fungi. 
So Gallimore states that the brain is a world-building machine and identifies psychedelic molecules as as tools for turning and operating, turning on and operating this machine. All psychedelics are altering the structure and dynamics of the of the experienced world, and fungi are extremely effective in influencing organic life to construct a model of the world according and in tune, in tune with them. But humans present them a problem because their attachment to reality testing their distrust of mythical and subjective experience and their firm belief into out, uh, in the autonomy of reason leads them to constantly misunderstand their psychedelic experiences. They understand them solely as experience, but not as inst- instructions or language or blueprint of a model to be constructed. So fungi are in this story very frustrated with humans because uh, they are mostly they are getting you know they are consuming magic mushrooms and instead of communicating and creating a feedback 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 loop with fungi they just you know they are impressed with colors and shapes and that is not not good so this uh so, so how does this connect uh, with everything, with extinction? And I was thinking about it, and I thought that perhaps pragmatism is one way how we can understand, how we can, you know, explain uh, behavior of fungi on the on- one side and humans on the other. So, um, fungi are focused on, on self-preservation, on avoiding risk on perpetuating what is good, what works for them into infinity. You know, time is for fungi almost flat. They are, they are very unlikely to change their methods, methods and they don't, you know, they don't really question the reality of their experience because it's simply that successful. They go from planet to planet, they create these pristine closed systems, and then they and then they you know then they go silent they don't communicate with you know their brothers from other planets because they um they understand uh what happens if they would understand that there would be unavoidable conflict in battle for resources and so on so yeah so so um repetitiveness is something that is good. Uh, you know, they are very adaptable, but their very goal is to create pristine, those pristine uh, systems that encapsulate planets. Um, so Evan Thompson stated some time ago on Twitter that James would probably be, William James would probably be an active uh, neurophenomenologist phenomenologist if he were alive today. That's why I thought that he is like this uh, perfect representative of fungi. Uh, ex- precisely his, um, his version of pragmatism that allows or is ready to take anything into the, into the account. It doesn't rely just on logic. It relies on logic, on senses. It considers the humblest and most personal experiences and will accept even mythical, mystical experiences or God, if they have some practical implications, if they are good, because this is what represents the truth. So, um, so because, because most organic life have capability of constructing psychedelic molecules, uh, it's, uh, this leads to all organic life to be included into this hive network this co-determination wouldn't be possible if there wouldn't be a language. Uh, so yes, even even the you know even the civil servants are are allowed to have mystical experiences, né? and and in that in that way, their action actions of fungi is like uh, some sort of democratic pragmatism of William James. But of course. If you join fungi, you are in their timeline. So on the other side, we have Persian pragmatists 
which are humans. So in, um, in this sense, um, you know, in, pers in Persian pragmatisms, the essence of it is to accept that we, are, we necessarily learn something from every action or every experiment or shoot in, a, in an ideal world and then act potentially radically different in the future in the light of the knowledge gained. To be mere creature of habit would be considered something bad with purse and suggest that, being, that this being is not autonomous. Whereas with James, this is a completely legitimate position to be in. Peirce describes inquiry of any kind as an attempt to reduce the irritation of doubt through the fixation of belief. It is also the essence of the logic of discovery, the creative function of abduction that Peirce thought was the engine of any and all knowledge. So, yeah, what do we have here? So we have here humans who are relying on autonomy of reasons and who are relying on scientific method, which in turn results them being able to revise their very experience. And this causes them to be uh, this externalization of mind, you know, on paper into writing or creating AI or using tools that are not organic makes them somewhat immune to fungi uh, agenda. You know, we also invent medicine, we think about things, we don't let our feelings be the main driving force, and such as, our, such as human in my story. So, so fungi are set up as intelligence that does not possess this ability of abductive inference. So this is something that we can understand uh, this abduction of something that can be used to reconstruct unseen causes and meanings lying in the past, as well as to reason about future consequences. So this basically means that in humans' case, there are many different futures. There is not one fixated goal. This goal can constantly change depending on what kind of abduction, what kind of hypothesis about the world we are making. Uh, whereas fungi have always this one main goal uh, through which they strive and they are rather successful doing it. So both ways, of, uh, both ways of acting is completely legitimate. The question is, if humans are, um, if humans desire to, you know, to really join fungi in this kind of being, in being, you know, in the, this whole system, not to be this kind of isolated and thrown from their own world. You know, they, they are not artificial enough to join artificial intelligence that escaped, but they are, they are organic enough, they could join fungi. So, we have we have this this conflict. We have these incoming aliens. We have aliens, fungi on Earth, and we have factions of humans that are still trying to trust the reason, and humans that gave up on it because they felt completely out of space, out of time, and defeated by the creation and the escape of artificial intelligence. <laughs> 